along the ridge here. Yep, I'm ready. Go ahead. And we're going to do a... Why don't you put Atalanta right there? And uh, Jonathan, if sure. I could, when I ask, this is a... It looks like sort of a, a ma almost a mesa type structure. Is that correct, what we're seeing on the... Uh, sonar. I should see. Yeah, I should say so. Yeah, it's a nice flat top, pretty tall. A flat we're top. And do a little 10 meter move here, Jonathan, and then uh, we'll do it. And we're flying along the edge and, of the uh, mesa, so to just, speak. Just to help it, uh, Dan, if you could start with wherever you left off when I said no more photogrammetry, that'd be helpful. Yeah, I'll to come back around to the brain crack there. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. I just want to confirm where, where it looks like uh, a ma it is a mesa type structure that the sonar is showing us, and we're flying around the essentially the edge of the mesa. Yeah, we've it, we've really covered well. Uh, one face that had the most well, it appears the most biodiversity. Um, so right now we're going to in an in an attempt to assess whether or not we really fully cover this or we continue to explore on. Um, Dan and I have discussed doing the outside perimeter as one complete circle and then filling in the top um, of this mesa-like structure um, as completely as we can. Uh, I think going up and down in that level of detail, there isn't much actually there. Um, and right. that's actually exactly what Norbit does best, is, is help uh, reveal the, the vertical structure of this. So. We're going to prioritize the photogrammetry for what it's for, which is revealing biodiversity. Yeah, so, so we've uh, Ooh, covered very cave. well the north, the northwest face of this, and and the top on the northwest quadrant of it. But now we'll just run around the rim, evaluate that, and then fill in the top. Are you recording, Jonathan? I am. Yeah. Right, yeah. Then. Let's okay. wiggle. I had to go look at the. Uh, Pseudo cave here while we're waiting for the boat to move. So. I like, I like that. Look at that. Uh, someone's asking, how do corals attach themselves to things? Yeah. So in their their larval stage, they will attach, and um, during that larval stage, as they mature, they will begin to calcify over the rock, the calcium carbonate, and become one with the rock. Um, so that's why we see those really thick. Um, stems or skeletons of the of the coral, the bases attached to the rock. Um, so once they are broadcasted or find their way to the rock um, from the currents in the water column, they will settle there um, and begin to form that calcium carbonate uh, skeleton after the larval stage. Gorgeous. Look at that. Another one of those little landmine sea urchins. Mm -hmm. Yes, I believe these are Histosideris carinata. I don't know if it has a common name. Let me check on that. And, and now we're on the northeast side, right? Yeah. And, and we are on, it looks to, we're on the, uh, on the western side of the island of Hawaii. And if I could ask of either anyone who knows, what uh, ty are there? What type of currents uh, dominate this area? I know that, for example, on the west coast, you have the Humboldt Current bringing in cold water from the Gulf of Alaska. Hey, look, uh, uh, we've here, got right the Gulf here. Stream uh, carrying warm water up yeah. the uh, east coast of the United States. Right. Are there any dominant currents <laughs> in this area that I are bringing nutrients dyslexic. into these That's corals right. or this part of the Hawaiian island chain? If Megan knows or any of the scientists listening in, because I've, I've been unable to, to detect any really dominant current structure out here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean around the islands. Now, John, I, I, I think there's the overarching, the, you know, the, 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 the trade winds and, and the currents that go with that, the easterlies and westerlies, but I think the islands themselves have tremendous influence uh, as they're intercepted, as those currents are intercepted. So you get a lot of local, local current flow uh, based on the shape of the islands. Brian has a whole white paper on uh, how the currents behave 
uh, closer to the uh, to the substrate, like uh, less than a meter. Uh, he is. Uh, yeah, what I was describing was really the the superficial currents. Uh, of course, they they have impact uh, down below too. But then, once again, when you have any of these smaller features, when you have a a prevailing current, um, these smaller features uh, will themselves uh, create turbulence around them, and, and that's why these critters tend to like to sit on the edges where where they can kind of stick their head in the wind. Yeah, and occurring to uh, Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument's website, uh, right. the the Kurisho, I'm not know if I'm pronouncing that Kuroshio current is one of the primary large scale currents that affects the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. This Western Pacific current runs along the eastern edge of Taiwan, northward, and then along the eastern edge of Japan, and then into the North Pacific, about halfway up the length of Japan's largest island. Um, so the current will transport warmer water that sustains some of Japan's northern coral reefs and also carries larvae away uh, from I these reefs. I think that's most, mostly on the real northwestern well, side. Yeah, yeah, near, farther away from where we are yeah. currently, yeah. yeah. Brian, was, uh, you know how we often ask why are there no corals here, even though there's uh, current blowing? And, yeah. And uh, the substrate seems favorable. He was postulating that the local uh, currents uh, close to the rock where the corals are, one meter and below, are affected by the, uh, the local conditions. So one of the things he was talking about was putting sensors over an entire seamount to, to kind of map that, which we, we've got to do. We don't know how they behave close to the rock. Yeah. Like a stream. You see a stream has all kinds of weird little currents and eddies in it, although the general stream could be flowing south. Well, it was pretty interesting. And I know I've uh, I read our, our, uh, our daughter just returned from a marvelous, just incredible trip to the Galapagos Islands, and these the tortoises, the dry land tortoises that are on the Galapagos, I've read, were were brought there by the uh, uh, by currents that flow from the west coast of South America out into the Pacific and probably floated on a, you know, after a big storm or a flood or something on a log or a piece of drift and made it by accident to the Galapagos and, and thrived there, and I think that's what you're describing is that current flowing from uh, uh, to the west from the coast of South America and then out into the Pacific and then kind of a big circular motion as you say up past Taiwan and Japan up into the northern uh, Pacific kind of a great uh, circular route that undoubtedly the early explorers followed as well. Uh, so Megan says that currents accelerate through the channels between the islands uh, here off Kona coast upwelling eddies will form this increases primary productivity off the Kona coast, which it is why there's good sports fishing and more nutrients reaching the seafloor to support these deep water coral communities. Um, and somebody was asking, is there a way to tell how old these corals are roughly at a glance? I'll, I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you the out. geophysicist's answer. The bigger it is, the older it is, probably. <laughs> yeah, they. Uh, I know earlier Megan was saying that they some of these species that we were seeing only grow a few centimeters a year. Um, so, and potentially that some of them were, uh, the ones that we were seeing being overgrown were potentially thousands of years old. That's incredible. Or 8,000 years old. Yeah. Look at this little, th yeah, look at this, look at this little you. crevice and, and uh, the nice home that the, the coral has found itself in. see how this coral is kind of maximizing whatever water flow is coming out of that little cave. It's perfectly shaped. Looks like it still needs a little growth to the north.
it, it's reached its uh, limits of growth. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are there other little animals that'll live on the coral that'll take advantage of uh, the food they capture to, uh, uh, as we see, it, I know in, 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 in Galveston and the Texas Gulf Coast, the sargasso weed that floats up every now and then is loaded with tiny animals, crabs, shrimp, fish, all kinds of little creatures that are, that are, that are obviously mm -hmm. catching food caught by the sargasso. Is something similar happening on the coral? Are there little animals that live on the coral? Yeah, so when we're seeing some of these yellow fans here, uh, they're actually zoanthariums overgrowing um, a coral skeleton, so occupying these old primnoid or paracalyptophora uh, skeletons. We often see different primnoids um, associated with a specific species of ophiuroids or brittle stars that will wrap themselves around the skeleton to uh, suspend themselves higher up in the water column and benefit from that positioning. Um, and being able to eat, feed better. We also see sometimes things like benthic tenophores that will be on uh, the branches of coral. Um, we've seen a couple of squat lobsters, not very many yet, um, but I think I've seen one or two since I've been on um, for this, this dive. Um, yeah, there are definitely shrimp and other species and other associates that we'll see um, that will be swimming around in these fans, especially, especially if we got a closer look. Yeah. Megan is, uh, oh, sorry. Please, go ahead. Uh, Megan said that uh, Brendan Rourke has characterized the growth rates of a lot of these species using the width of the base. Oh, would you like a closer look? We could, um, especially if we that, see would that any. Your, uh, yeah. Not a lot of associates there. Oh. Um, somebody's we coming. happen to be in a good place to... Uh, That's a particularly nope. beautiful one. I, I can't hear. It's gorgeous. That is, that is truly spectacular. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Just this is going to be worth it just for the still picture alone. I can, um, I can see the 3D uh, print of that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Can I have the, a 3D oh, print of that one? That would be cool. Look at the artistry cool. here. The, the, the yeah. printer will faint from exhaustion. <laughs> yeah, all that Quinn, detail. <laughs> Quinn will faint from exhaustion. <laughs> it, yeah. is, it is hypnotic it's how incredible. perfect this is. And Quinn owes me some PLA. <laughs> now, we're we're lot, capturing probably. this in <laughs> high resolution, too, as well, which is it's an extraordinary image that oh. folks should be able to see in high resolution. So I thought that, so on the lower left-hand side of the uh, cinema cam, you could see, I thought a little piece of the coral had actually fallen, but it's actually just growing over that tiny oh, hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's uh, catching Every whatever current flows out of there, Jonathan. of current. Yeah, excuse me, Jonathan. Yeah, you're right. It's catching whatever current is flowing out of that hole. This tiny little thing. And this is going to be the most masterful 3D scan. Actually, can we mark the time, please? Sure. Uh, and Megan is saying it's that uh, the one that we were talking about, Taylor and Peri Para Cal Calitrophora Highway. Okay, oh, thank you. I can really we turn the lasers on for a moment, please? What's yeah. that? The lasers on yeah. for a moment, please. Roger. Um, yeah, Paracalyptrophora hawaiianensis, um, which I've just been saying, Paracalyptrophora. But that's good. Just gonna uh, back off that is the specific bit, species. Can, uh, come down on this uh, side without. Uh, somebody said that they would pay for a 3D print of this, uh, allow it to go to the funding of future expeditions. Roger. Uh, one of the things that I'd encourage you, I think, we'll, well, we've marked the location of this particular. Um, observation we'll try to turn this one around maybe tonight if uh, depending on our download status and then um, but I'd encourage people if they want something that's this detailed to print there's many online um, 3d printing services you can get um, things I'm not sure if it was it was Bob or Dan mentioning um, doing resin printing for really detailed work yeah 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 that's good for the lasers thank you um, 
you can see the base of that coral is 10 centimeters wide. Quite remarkable. Um, anyway, if you're looking to 3D print this, there's um, services online. Yeah, laser sure. laser. Yeah, yeah, can you shut the lasers off, please, Dan? Can you uh, drop down a few minutes? And then... Um, Thank you. So, for these... Uh, drop down a few meters for me. So, Jonathan, if I understood you correctly, then people could download this and print this if they have a 3D printer at home? Yeah, that's correct. That's the Excuse ultimate me. plan? That, that is correct. You could do that. Um, the caveat is that this is such a detailed, um, such a detailed image uh, that you really do need to send that kind of thing out to a specialist printing company that can do it out of uh, ceramic or, or some other. Oh my uh, gosh! Material. Yeah, I think you could do it out of resin. Do you? Yeah, I've done about that amount of detail. I say we do. This is about the ultimate 3D <laughs> printed um, print off. If you're at home and you have fancy 3D printers, please print this object. And uh, it obviously tag Nautilus Live, hashtag exploration yeah. through advanced imaging, and um, hashtag print off. We'd love to see us. us. <laughs> so if you think about the laser spots on there, that beautiful coral was probably over a meter wide, so and, and substantially over a meter wide, so probably four feet or so. In yeah. width, and it's 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 hard to it's huge. judge that from here, but that that's that's it, really large. It's huge, and and also as you zoom in with more detail, undoubtedly each one of those little, uh, you know, uh, fronds of the coral is loaded with little uh, polyps, which uh, you know is going to create even more detail for the printer. It's just an extraordinarily gorgeous. It's not an. It's a. It's a col. Is it a colony of animals? It's not a single animal. It's a colony. For corals, yeah. Yeah, corals yeah. Are a colony of animals. It's yeah, not, they're colonial. Not a single animal. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a colonial organism, correct? So uh, each one of these, if we zoomed in closer, um, you can see each one of the polyps, um, which each one of them independently feeds um, in the water column. So that, as you would see, that there'd be a benefit of that yep. to just having one large polyp, um, exactly. there's more opportunities for, for the organism to feed. Is it possible to zoom in close to see what each one of those little arms, each one of those little fronds looks like up close? It's just exquisitely yeah, well, beautiful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set it down here and we'll do a quick zoom. Uh, we have a question from Vanessa, who is 11. Uh, she's asking, how old do you think this coral is and how many species of coral are there? I am not sure how old this coral is, but I would assume very old, hundreds of years old, determining, like, just by looking at the size of, and how intricate the branching is. Um, but Megan pointed out earlier that there is somebody doing a um, okay, research on Give sizing my, uh, um, right and, and or right. aging by the size of the base of the corals. Um, oh, oh my zoom. gosh. Full zoom. Oh, wow. Look at that. That'll give the 3D printer a heart attack. I can't get any closer because it's taller that's, than Hercules. It's so. extraordinary. It's taller. The coral is taller than Hercules. Yeah. And Hercules stands how tall? Two meters. Remarkable. That's extraordinary. This is a huge, spectacularly beautiful coral. It's, uh yeah, you can see wow. the, uh, that's uh, our bumper bar there that you're looking at. So it's up above our bumper bar. Oh, you can see in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, that's that 3D printer could absolutely do that. It's an extraordinary, complicated job. But a, Jonathan, could a 3D printer handle that? <laughs> uh, I'm going off the expertise of uh, Chris and some of our chat that are very excited to get this on a resin printer. <laughs> uh, someone says that they saw a brittle star on the coral behind this one. And uh, oh, okay. if I can, since we're breaking a little bit off of the photogrammetry, I also did get a request from Megan Putz to zoom in on the big toppled gold coral. Looks like there was a bamboo coral growing off of it. Okay. So, Dan, okay. I, I don't know if you heard that, but... I did. Okay, you okay. can uh, zoom out. If everyone's happy with the polyps in there. 
Yeah, um, thank you. Thank you very much. You can go We've wide. Thank thoroughly you. covered this Fantastic. beautiful coral. Uh, we'll also Time try to, to make this uh, image um, available on, on uh, Nautilus through our, our fantastic communications team. Um, and somebody in the chat is suggesting uh, 6,000 species, depending on how you delineate them. Look look at the shape of this feature. It's uh, perfectly heart-shaped. Oh. <laughs> it is indeed. And it's, I think, also the size and the health of the coral is a reflection of what it's it got a Megan, really good spot. Megan, are you spot. talking about the one? Megan, are you talking about the one uh, right there to the right? Oh, yeah. Jonathan? I, I have no idea. I'm sorry. The, the yeah. quote verbatim is, is, can we zoom in on that big toppled gold coral? Looks like there was a bamboo coral growing off of it. Um, oh, so yeah. I see one. which one. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I see it. I see it. Um, okay, I'm going to step away to do an interaction, and I will be right back. A beautiful cave again. What a Absolutely. stunning image with uh, Atalanta lighting this also from behind. For those um, we also have a um, one of the lights, which was special for this expedition, one of the lights that's traditionally on the side of the ROV. Um, Simon, one of the uh, ROV engineers, um, rerouted it and placed it on the craft manipulator arm, so it's providing a little bit of side, light, side lighting, which really helps the quality of this image. That's what this one's for you, Megan. Hi, everyone. Do you mind if I join for the next 30 minutes or so? Well. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that, Larry. <laughs> no, we're happy to have you here. <laughs> oh, is that Nurchin that's beh sitting behind that? Yeah. It yeah, is. The, uh, there's a deed nurture there behind. This must be a really good spot for the currents to carry nutrients. These coral obviously are thriving in this spot. Is there an ideal band of temperature that coral okay, needs to Okay, but now you thrive? can uh, push in just a little bit on uh, the possible bamboo growing off of the their coral. It also has a bonus basket star there on the left. Oh, would you look at that? So so the striped part yeah. is the bamboo coral. Yeah, it is, yeah. And then it looks like me to me that these are zoanthids also. Um, also I'm assuming the same there. species. Um, the Kalamanamana and that's the, gold, the zoanthids are the Probably. gold are the gold part. Yeah, oh, the zoanthids, yeah, are and the the gold polyps. Like, I think it's just all the same and coral. The and the red is the bamboo. Yes. Polyps on the red on the bamboo coral itself. Yes, yeah, the red pinkish orange right. color. Mm -hmm. I guess a, kind of a salmon color polyps that is part of the original bamboo coral. And it looks like maybe a little squat lobster in there. Is that what we're seeing? Yeah. Hey, it buddy. Is. Is that a little uh, shrimp right in the middle? Just a bit more. Uh, mm, we're thinking it's probably a squat lobster, which means everybody needs to get up and do a squat real quick. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we stay in shape on the ship. Uh, Matt, Maddie, <laughs> if you if you could put back up the the chat because we're we're getting Absolutely. kind of re real real time input for Megan, which is extremely helpful. Oh, is yeah, Megan on this chat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a little fish there on the lower right. On, uh, I wish we could get her on the SPL. Great. So Megan says this is a Midas colony, um, just in the beginning stages of being colored by the gold coral. Wow. Very cool. What is that creature with the claw right in the middle? 
on the stem. A the squat squat lobster? Is that? Uh, he might be, John yeah. might be referring to the shrimp below the squat lobster. Yeah, there is a shrimp there. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah but the ones you see moving the claw. That's it's a squat I, lobster. I believe so. Kind of look, and then, oh yeah, and then we do have like a little shrimp down there too, below the below the squat. I think Megan is saying the bottom is a different zoanthid. Um, that's, I'm sorry for my scientific mispronunciation, stolonophorus? Yeah, the stolonifrins are the, the little polyps beneath the yellow ones okay. that are tan, um, that don't quite uh, match with the, the polyps that we're seeing on the bamboo coral itself, the Midas colony. Yeah, so we're seeing a lot of different growth here on this. Boy, you know, oh, it's a thriving. Is that, uh, falls in there, is it? It's a thriving yeah, little city. Is. Yeah, it is, isn't it? What's that? Yeah, Go ahead, is. John. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous zoom there, Manel. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, someone's going to have to give the command to move on because I could sit here and watch this body <laughs> all day. Keep moving. <laughs> Roger. Okay, if you slowly go wide for us, Manel, that would be great. Copy that. Okay, so um, oh, we yeah, got certainly comfortable. We got to get a quick look here, at the basket maybe, star. Uh, uh, the you equipment. can zoom in right, there understood, again, understood. real quick. Just yeah, for sure. Keep me informed. Thanks just a lot. Just while we're here. So. Yeah. Okay, just a oh, oh, a general wow. yeah. like a, wow. Wow. a general warning to everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, wow. the temperature in the <laughs> folks. Yes. Be folks, I, I need everybody's attention here. Um, just a warning that the, we're getting a report the temperature in the racks is rising almost dangerously, and so we may have to cur curtail the d dive if they can't control it. They're trying to they're trying to send more cooling water up, but um, yeah, so just, sure. just a warning. Ten four. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Are we looking at a? Are we thinking that's a basket scar star? I think with that, with that in mind, if we can just uh, let's start ripping around, uh, okay, and you filling can, up, uh, go wide. filling okay. around the borders is our priority <laughs> of this entire feature, just so we have a bounding box yep. for that we can match. And then, for myself, uh, an additional priority, Chris, is to fill in any remaining gaps or resolution that you would like to see from the Norbit. Um, this being our 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 case example that we will. Um, produce for for the sensor fusion angle of this and, expedition and, okay. and looking at the shape of this feature um, it's a shame that we didn't do it on Valentine's Day as oh, opposed to yes. Halloween because that's, well, that's yeah. remarkable this can always be another highlight further <laughs> down absolutely yeah uh, we can totally uh, do a survey of this um, I think Atalanta is already in a good position we shouldn't even have to move but it will take a couple passes because there's a lot of edges but I would, I would certainly offer to prioritize that. Um, we have solid coverage of about, half. looks like a third, a half, half. half, half, almost half. So, um, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I think it, if, we, if we can come around. It, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, Larry. Yeah, so I think if we can just keep moving around the, the crest, uh, it's usually the most interesting part, to be yep. honest. Yeah, I'm going to do kind of a high pass on this one because I have the... Uh, Manipulator hanging out on my right side, and this then is, I'll, this is I'll more come than back. Fine. I'll come yep. back the other way and do a uh, a lower pass where where we catch the edge of the uh, feature. Okay. Uh, struggling in the breeze a little bit here. Yeah, I don't want to do a low pass with the uh, manip hanging out there when collateral damage would be excessive. All right, we just had someone ask what the current depth of the ROV is at. It's 387 meters is what Grafana is telling me. Yeah, I got turned around here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to come the other way, drop down, because we have the manipulator hanging out. You just uh, we want to go to the south here, and then I'll turn around and head back to the north. Sorry, I got turned around there. Which way will we go? We were going this way. Okay, let's 
seems to be uh, I'll just run out to the little tip here and then turn around. Right, and then, yeah. Can you, uh, you can come down uh, three meters. Let's go single digits there. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty calm. You can actually come down to about s eight or nine meters. So I'm just going to turn around right here at the end. Well, this is the tip. Uh, you're going to have to come down dangerously low for me to get enough leash to turn around. Where we see, here we see a piece that fell off. <laughs> yeah. A couple little happy fish there. Right. I assume Joy. You can uh, you can come down to single digits. And also, it looks like there's a little white sponge. Hmm. Is that a sponge? Kind of looks like that. A little brain sponge. Uh, it could be a small coral fan. Yeah, yeah oh. sure. I just, well, yeah, the weather's too far. Calm, so oh, I can't quite get it. We don't let many interns do that, right? But since you're an ONC employee, we'll let you get away with it. So. Special Canadian dispensation. Canadian yeah. <laughs> dispensation. Okay, I'm headed back towards you now. You should get a, a little relief. So you're gonna come back along the same edge? Uh, yeah, I just uh, we just drug Atalanta a little, and it's hard for Hercules to come around there because the tether was tight. Okay. But yeah, now we're gonna come back the I other think, way. I think we certainly get the impression that the current is probably uh, faster on this uh, northwest face. And we had much more you abundance. You might wanna pick it up a little so our tether doesn't wipe out the corals there. Ooh. And, Close. And, and as we move <laughs> in this direction, I think we'll see the abundance uh, increase just based on that current direction? Yeah, you can bring your head around a little. I'm, I'm just basing it on, on where I see the increased abundance uh, and the yeah. fact that there's a deep channel. Um, oh, I see, on that map, sure. A deep channel on, um, facing the northwest face, and that's probably uh, that's probably funneling some of the current. And so in satellite feed three, you can see part of the design feature of this system for photogrammetry. When we're doing an edge survey like this, we're getting two angles at once. We're getting that fisheye, super wide view on the lower left-hand side of the frame, and we're additionally getting that kind of top-down perspective, and that saves us a great deal of time and allows us to get a much, much more detail around edges like this. What's that? We're taking photos of both the top and the bottom. Yeah. And here's that, that yeah, you can mega, come up mega coral we saw, the beautiful, beautiful mega coral. What, what's okay, yeah, we're uh, back. Paracalyptophora uh, hawaiianensis. We've been here before. So yes. Yeah. Uh, we want to do the zoomy across the top now. Is that the. Um, yeah, the if that's the shortest way, and then we want to. Yeah, go ahead, Larry. Yeah, I, I can if, just. If we came right across the top, kind of head to the ship, in a sense. Yeah, I could mow the lawn across the top now. We've been all along this uh, northern edge here, so right. I'll just come in a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be some uh, high-speed runs here. For you. I like uh, high-speed. You're all right with that? Yep. Witness the full power of the mighty Hercules. Full beans. And we'll get to see the difference. Yeah, I'm going to come, come right up. The difference in the distribution along the top versus along the edge, and I think I think it'll probably diminish somewhat, but we'll see. Megan, so that small coral we saw earlier was a Acanthagoria, a little tiny white one, I think. Oh, okay, so oh, Acanthagorgia, yeah. Acanthagorgia. Uh, I've been confusing those with the yellow zoanthids. So mm. It's been really hard, but I think you can tell the difference uh, between like the, the base of the branch uh -huh. or the, the skeleton. I think the Acanthagorgids kind of have more of obvious um, thick branching. Uh, and we've been seeing the zoanthids overgrow bamboo corals uh, primarily. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a finer branching pattern than the oh. canthagorgia. Okay. I've been here before already, so I'm going to turn and burn right. back the other way. Yeah. Megan says you want to follow along the edge, along this side, if you can? Uh, I've been along that. Uh, you want to do the south edge? Yeah, the south edge. Yeah, okay. well, let me uh, let me mow the lawn here on okay. the, in the middle, and then we'll... We'll pick sure. up the south edge last. And it looks like the top of this mesa is pretty consistent at about 390, 380 meters. It's a remarkably 
uh, reminiscent of what you see in the southwest uh, United States of the mesa with a fairly flat top poking up. Megan is saying the dead Carl she wanted to see. Oh. Where? Uh-oh. I think I even... Did we pass a dead coral? I think we did. I think the delay in the chat, we were already past it when she sent that in. I mean, I'm happy to go back if, uh, Megan, we... Um, I don't recall. Maybe on the, if we're mowing the lawn on the way back... You know what? I'm going to call Megan on the way back and then... Uh, yeah, I, I can go back across it, Megan. Roger. I'm going to turn that way anyways because okay, so tying my tether in a knot. Now we're on the northeast face, coming Correct. back around. So it doesn't take very long to us to cross, for us to cross the top. Just gonna go back on my same path here and see if we can pick right. up the. Uh, she did send two exclamation points, so she really wants to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks right. for calling that, Larry. <laughs> those, those corals are perched on the edge of this. Uh, structure look like they're catching the updraft coming up the side with the, no doubt that are full of nutrients and they'll catch more current there I'm flying an ad screen here so if anyone sees what Megan was on about yeah I um Jonathan, this is a, an interesting question. Um, you might be able to answer. What's a way that a citizen scientist could use photogrammetry? Are you talking about these here, Megan? Um, let me, I'm actually calling her. Oh yeah, okay. This is what you call the uh, dial home option. Yeah. <laughs> It's nice to be in service, too. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, just uh, call was requesting a shot call, a, the, call a doctor. <laughs> Megan. So, Jonathan? He's, yeah. he's on the phone. Oh, yeah. I'm going to assume this is what Megan wants to see. Can we no, do it's, it? No, this is not what Megan wants to see. This is not what Megan wants to see. No. It was like that, but it was even larger. Roger. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna keep you on the line, Megan, and if you see it, because there's a delay in the chat. This is Scientists Ashore Part Two. <laughs> uh, was it in the middle or on the edge? Was it in the middle or on the edge? Okay, on the edge. Uh, it must have been where I turned around here. That okay. we're kind of on the south. We're we're on the southern flank, so I think it's more on the northern flank when you first chirped about it. Okay, I'll relay that to Dan. She says that it was before we stopped to see the really large, cute fan coral, Calyptoflora. Oh, that it was wrong? on that kind of bluff. On Somewhere on the bluff around the, the giant one that we zoomed in on. Okay, uh, so that, that was on the uh, that north. Was on the north side. Northeast face. Northeast face. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna do a uh, path across on a new uh, oh, where we know, haven't yeah. been before. Continuing mowing along, we just got the little chunk down there. The yeah. <laughs> and then I'll uh, go along the edge there again. I do wish. I wish. It's the original phone a friend option somebody just says <laughs> wasn't this one was it no we're not this is a place we haven't been before so yeah this yeah we haven't been here before Jonathan, so. No. He'll, he'll making a bonus dead coral. She likes dead <laughs> things as well as live things. Too. He'll he'll get back to uh, no, that he'll is get not back it. to where we were before in a, in a moment. For everyone, for anyone listening that's wondering what's going on, we have a uh, uh, Megan Putts with uh, University of Hawaii. Uh, yeah, you can drop down, please. Yeah, come right down. Providing again. us some uh, 
provided us with a site to drop in on first when we were looking for areas of high coral density. Um, she saw an object of interest that she wanted to check out with a possible bamboo coral growing on a um, on a skeleton of a dead sponge. So we're just going to search around for that briefly for her. Yeah, Roger. Hmm. No, no. Definitely pulling on you. Oh. Uh, that, that was the thing. To, to the left? Yeah. So that, that was another large, beautiful coral, but that's yeah. one we hadn't seen before. So oh, that was no. a different one. That large. was a different one. Is that a different one, too, that's just coming in the... Uh, no, this is no, the this, big fan this, we this were is, looking this at. This is the one we were looking at. This is the same at. one. This is the one, the original one. But it says we have another one just uh, south of it, southeast right. of it. We need to come up with a good name for this magnificent coral that we keep coming back to. It's, uh, it's kind of like home plate. Oh. It's a gorgeous shot in Argus cam there. Yeah, I don't know where the... Chris, you're showing us backscatter on... on uh... No, this is uh, points per cell. Okay. Anything over red is over a thousand points per cell, so this gives us an idea of what we've observed right. the most, maybe just, right? Uh, where we got the most big, points. It should be right here, so if we don't see it, maybe we just uh, move on. Uh, I'm just scanning around for yeah, bones, Dan, Dan coral bones. Going around, coral bones. Making the room dizzy. Uh, it wasn't this thing, was it? Yeah, I don't see. Oh, hey, is this With it? the yellow pieces there? With the yellow pieces oh. on the dead. Is that a Roger, Jonathan? Uh, yeah. She, she's thinking she's growing more confident by the second. The yeah yeahs are getting more excited. <laughs> How about this, Megan? Wow. Is it knocked over? Is that what we're seeing here? Yeah, it looks. So yeah. Th th this has been the elusive dead this coral. Is it. Yep. Yep. Good navigation, Jonathan and Megan. Yeah, no kidding. And Dan, thank you for getting us back. Fly yeah, around in now. the dark long <laughs> enough, you'll find it. All right, it. so what, what are you interested in zooming in on? Talk to me, Jonathan. Okay. Megan was talking to him. It sounds like it, she was saying this coral is really old. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead and zoom in a bit there for Yeah, it's just a, a general view, yeah, Dan, copy. of this um, as, nice a, as a novel yeah. observation of uh, associate life on, on this very ancient coral. I think so. Uh, good, thanks. Mm -hmm. And then Megan would like us to zoom in on the bamboo coral and observe where it's actually attached, if it's attached to I the I can't quite hear you, Jonathan. Sorry, and then Megan would like to zoom in on the bamboo coral and uh, see where it's actually attached um, at its base. Uh, to my left. Oh, there you go. Wow. It is, that's that big one. Over there. How do you spot that stuff? Do you see this, Megan? <laughs> I guess when you looked at it all your life, you know what to, you know what to look for. So we're seeing uh, one species attached to another amazing. species of coral. Is that what we're looking at here? Are are That's you what, it what appears are you looking to be. at right now? I yeah. think you're on a big delay. It seems like they're. I think she's seeing this bamboo coral here. The pink one mm. is overgrowing this the the main branch of this other coral that already died, oh, wow. which is something oh. is m potentially novel and not been seen. Oh, we're but not. Uh, oh, go, go. Are you on sat feed one? Uh, we're staring at the base of the coral right now. So. so so the the bamboo coral used the other coral as its substrate. Yeah, so sh this would be very right in her thinking that this is a very, very old coral that's dead. 
um, it would give it time for this other bamboo coral to completely attach oh, and wow. adhere and grow on top of it. Um, okay, cool. But I'm going to switch over to Zach. Thanks, Taylor Ann. This circle of life. You should, can you type that in though so uh, we can read it out properly? Okay, thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. All right, Thanks, we're Megan. standing I'll by for her comment here, coming in the, <laughs> the chat. <laughs> Multiple channels of conversation happening. But, but again, this is the, just the absolute power of this kind of technology that we can have Megan sitting somewhere in Hawaii. She could have been in Australia. Yeah. No kidding, yeah. A and guiding us to focus in on something that's important to the expert. A and we're here to, to provide that service. Um, and, and the broader group of experts we can get engaged, the, the better we can do our science. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very collaborative effort. And just like... Just like we have our uh, viewers who are writing in at nautiluslive.org, we also have our, typically our scientists ashore as well, kind of joining in on the conversation and helping us to identify what it is we're looking at. It's very cool. You can uh, zoom in just a bit more for us there, Manu. Yeah, absolutely. And, and our guess here, we're waiting We're waiting for Megan's comment to come in. We have this is uh, quite a delay, but our guess is we're seeing... Uh, the bamboo coral, the, the reddish coral here, that's actually uh, growing on top of the older coral. And, uh, and uh, uh, Mega did indicate this is this is enough. She's going to type in a more detailed uh, explanation of what we've seen for the audience, because as she was saying it to me, I would have failed to <laughs> translate what she was saying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so from from I think from the science aspect there we're we're good to continue what we can. Okay. okay. Well, we can. Now you can uh, slowly go wide for us and. Uh, and we, ha we have a little, we have a, a little more of the top to cover and uh, yeah. and the south uh, west side. So we have a a long comment in here that just came in. There's also some interesting growth forms on the bamboo there, with those funky branching patterns. Uh, that's usually caused by a disruption from some kind of predator or irritant. They will also try and grow around anemones that they colonize them and will eventually cover them up and make like a burl on a tree almost. So that's kind of an interesting lens to look at it through. Not sure if that was Megan's comment, but hopeful nonetheless. Yeah. She's been sending her name at the front of the comment. Yeah. Okay, where was I? I was zooming around. Yep, you're covering the top. He's trying to color a here now. But trying to color a green map red. Yep. Here we go. Um. So it says regarding that coral we were just oh, looking yeah, at. Can come up. You could see the gold on the dead coral created by the. Kulama nama nama ha umi a a a. I am really trying. My, I'm just doing it phonetically as I can see it. I'm so sorry for my mispronunciation. Uh, so it looks like dead coral was completely covered by zoanthids at one time. Very old skeleton. This like riveting kind of happening through these channels is really interesting yeah, too. Uh, here we go. We got. We finally got Megan's message. Uh, Madison, why don't you? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, Megan. There you are. This is a really interesting life cycle. In the beginning, this coral started as a bamboo coral that was then taken over by the gold coral. The gold made new gold skeleton and grew for 2,000 more years, um, and that created a more toppled and uh, and that toppled and is now hosting a new growth as a bamboo coral. So the original species was colonized. Wow. Um, and then she estimates maybe the next this new bamboo right coral might also be colonized by the gold. So it's that's fascinating. We're just seeing the circle of life. <laughs> no, thousands of layers of circles of life <laughs> happening. I love it. That is so uh, fascinating. Come down a few for me. Kind of the uh, southern edge here. Uh, yeah, that's an old coral, 2,000 years. I mean, that's 
what, it's only 2023, right? <laughs> so if you think about it, that kind of goes back to the beginning of our modern history books there. It, it does. I had no idea corals grew that uh, slowly or that could be that old. It's extraordinary that animal is 2,000 years old, which means there's undoubtedly corals even older, like the, the bristle cone pines and the sequoia. Absolutely. Zach, we have a couple of biology questions coming in. How are you? How's your biology brain feeling? <laughs> are you doing my shot? <laughs> I heard um, there's been yeah. some good questions today. There's some good questions coming in. Um, someone wants to know, what can you learn from the genome of corals? I think that's a really interesting question given what we're doing with eDNA and and yeah. that water column analysis. analysis. Um, I'm definitely no geneticist or anything, but um, I mean, they could tell you a lot of things. They could tell you the, the range they disperse. Um, for example, like looking at some deep sea corals here and ones around other parts of the island, seeing if they're kind of the same or if they've split at some time. Um, yeah, I can tell you, you know, if you're gonna have a different water depths, they might be changing as well. So there's quite a bit from that. Again, I'm, I'm not a geneticist, but if you get down to that level, um, you can really start asking new questions as well, not even just answering some of the old ones. Yeah, and um, if, if for those of you who are curious about learning a little bit more about coral um, genetic information, Steve Oskovich, who sails on EV Nautilus, is sort of a coral geneticist and genetics expert. Um, so he has a lot of published work out there that you can maybe explore and, and learn a little bit more about what that looks like. Um, but I'm going to pop off. Thanks for letting me join you all. I'm going to hand it back over to Ale, and I'll be listening in the lounge. Ciao. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Madison. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Manny. And uh, John, I think you'd appreciate this comment from uh, Megan that the gold corals have been likened to the bristlecone pines of the deep sea. So it's a good analogy. A good analogy on your part. That's that's marvelous. And uh, to, to think that these animals could grow that long, that steadily. And if we could, uh, if Megan, if you're listening, how, what are, what are some of the oldest corals? How old can they get? Uh, if, if this particular one's about 2,000 years old, how old can some of them get? I'm just, I'm just noting the color, color we're getting here at this little group incredible. of corals. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, real quick, I see there's a question also about um, what are zoanthids. Um, they're, they're fairly similar. They're, they're also a cnidarian, just a different order. Um, they're not necessarily, they kind of grow on things, whereas as like the corals they're growing, like the structure and the branch themselves. So a, a zoanthid can easily take those over. We see it here um, quite often. In the shallow water, you'll see kind of piles of zoanthids together as well. So they, they form that colony, but they're they, they're more just soft. There's there's no hard structure to zoanthids. They're more um, they almost encrust things <laughs> as the soft as the soft uh, organ on top. It's kind of the the basis of it, I'd say. But yeah, zoanthids you find at all different depths. different uh, corals on that guy as well. Um, so Megan's saying, honestly, we don't know how old they can be. Uh, we need more exploration and study to know for sure. The oldest collected coral was a black coral that was aged to be about 4,265 years old. Wow. Thank you, Megan. That's extraordinary. Now yeah. I have to go back and look and find out what are some of the, I think the bristlecone pines are the oldest trees on earth. 
And I, th I think we've heard before that that aging is done through uh, counting growth rings. And I, don't, I can imagine counting 4,265 rings, and that must be uh, quite the quite the effort. But maybe I was always told that the corals don't have a, you can't. We can't age them like we can a tree with the growth rings. Okay, I thought I thought that's what we were told. Uh, maybe Megan will comment on that too. Poor Megan, we just. <laughs> pounding, She's being very helpful. Oh, it's phenomenal. Well, you know, and the age of these magnificent animals adds a whole new dimension to the importance of protecting these fragile habitats and ensuring the survival of these magnificent corals all over the world. What an, an immense tragedy it is when we lose, and we all we all feel it when a tree. The, the, uh, one of the oldest trees in Texas was lost this weekend in a in a windstorm, and uh, I know everybody it made headlines all over the state. Uh, what a tragedy it was! It would be to lose these magnificent corals. Um, we have a question: uh, If uh, corals have been uh, ever been dated using like carbon fourteen dating or, or absolute methods? Um, such that you could estimate the ages of these based on their size and uh, growth rate. Chris, how comfortable are you with the, your coverage of this feature? Because uh, Jonathan is almost done. Um, okay, we want to do a couple uh, high passes on yeah, the way Yeah, it would probably be beneficial to do a couple dedicated passes. Okay. I mean, we definitely got points on it, but mm -hmm. doing right, well, a, a quick plan survey would... No, let, let's do it, because uh, Jonathan has such a good data set, we might as well make all the data sets uh, equally complete. Right. Um, and then I'm thinking we still have uh, oh What's an that? hour and a half or so, and I'm looking at the feature to uh, the uh, south um, southeast. There's a uh, just following, basically following along this trend. Actually, this, this and I, this yeah, uh, crack yeah, here. Yeah, that yeah. we might we might want to just cool. we might want to follow that along because it's it's nice and high, nice and thin. Can I break in real quick? Just a question. Yeah. Uh, Dan, do you did you get a really good coverage? The best, the best feature of this is going to be that northwest wall. Yeah. Did you get good coverage of the sand to wall transition along the base? I, I came down every time till I saw sand in the, uh, in the stereo camera. I think if if we can, it would be beneficial to do a linear sweep just to make sure that we have a good uh, connection between the uh, that base sand and and the wall. Can do. Okay, there's been we're both getting greedy here now at the yeah. end, you know. Lots of really good discussion about dating corals, and uh, and um, Megan's pointed out that, that they look like they have growth rings, but they don't correlate to age and years, and that's led to lots of misunderstandings about the growth rate of coral. A colony with 65 to 100 growth rings might actually be well over a thousand years old. So, the technique that's used for the most part is isotopic techniques, um, and that's the ratio of uh, carbon isotopes or oxygen isotopes, depending on what isotope they use, and there's been some debate here also that, that they certainly, the ages that they have uh, fit well within carbon-14 carbon dating, but um, there's a problem because they, uh, the corals themselves can consume uh, uh, carbon that's actually quite old, and that will uh, affect the accuracy of the dating. 
So it says for the most part um, it's, uh, it's dated isotopically and that's when you know the decay rate of uh, two different uh, isotopes of an element, carbon or oxygen, and we know the rate at which they decay and by looking at the ratio of those isotopes um, based on some understanding of uh, what the starting ratio was you can get an idea of how old a material is and that's done with uh, very fancy mass spectrometers that, that measure the isotopic uh, content Can you move uh, 10 meters 315 for me, Chris? Bridge, bridge now. 10 meters 315. Uh, we have a question if argon is used. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not the one who can answer that <laughs> in terms of what the isotopes that are, u that are used. Um, and then another question, do you have any internships for high schoolers? I believe we don't. I think, I think it's just college students. Uh, but go to nautiluslive.org and then click on, uh, let me check, hold on, I forget, I always forget, I think it's on the education tab at the top, and then scroll down a little bit, um, and then click on at C programs and students. Yeah, so go to nautiluslive.org, click on education, uh, scroll down a little bit, you'll see at sea programs and then click on students. And then you'll see information about the science and engineering internship um, and applications uh, on about for that. Um, I don't know, Manel, do you want to speak to that a little bit since you're an intern? I don't know if Manel is on SPL. It looks like, looks like she's not. Okay. Um, let me just uh, explain what we're doing right now. Uh, Jonathan has uh, finished a, a very spectacular uh, photogrammetry run of this feature, which has a number of beautiful uh, corals on it. Um, he's quite satisfied with uh, the information he, he has. We have been using, we found this feature actually with uh, the first pass of the multi-beam sonar, which uses sound as opposed to light uh, to image the seafloor, and that carries much, much further than the light. So we were able to see a much larger uh, area and found this elevated feature and we were able to head right there. Um, we're now stepping back a little, uh, getting a little further away from the wall and going to do uh, another run or two with the multi-beam sonar so that, that uh, Chris Kraskanowski, our multi-beamer here, uh, can, can, also, can also get uh, complete coverage and, and so we'll have those two data sets, the acoustic data set, the sonar data set from the multi-beam sonar and the photogrammetry data set and one of the really nice things about having both those data sets is that that Chris's data comes already what we call georeference. We have a an absolute position in X, Y, and Z for where each of the, the pixels that he produces is. The camera information doesn't come that way um, but by having those two pieces of information together, we can actually then take the photogrammetry and co-register it and put it in the real world, know where it is in terms of latitude, longitude, and depth. And so somebody's asking, what is photogrammetry? Okay. So photogrammetry is uh, the, the idea of using not necessarily one, but in this case, two cameras to get two different perspectives on the same scene. And it takes advantage of the fact that it's the way our brain works with our eyes. We have two eyes, we see, we see anything, any object we look at from two slightly different perspectives and our brain can combine those two different perspectives to give us a 3D view of the world. We see the world in, in 3D as long as we have vision in both eyes. And so photogrammetry takes advantage of the same concept we have two cameras taking the view of the same thing from slightly different angles. And uh, Jonathan has software that will then take that, those different views and reconstruct them 
and create a three-dimensional scene from that. And so that's the, the concept of, of photogrammetry, to, to put together this photorealistic three-dimensional view of, of a, an object. Yeah, and to add to that, the having the two cameras also saves a lot of time because we can get both angles on the same time, right? We don't have to do two laps and take photos of each side of every structure because in the model we want both sides clear. We want everything to be um, imaged before. So if we only have one yeah. camera, we'd have to be you swinging can, uh, back around each time, which down here, time is time is valuable. So. Yeah, and that, and that, yeah, that, that, that uh, is a very good point because there's another approach to creating 3D views, okay. something Let's we call up. structure from motion. And uh, as Zach was saying, to do that, you need to have tremendous overlap in each frame. And then you, you find in the different frames the same object we'll, and try to combine We'll come up for the Norbit. But uh, that takes a lot more time in terms of uh, Where do you want me, Chris? covering the area. Uh, I'll, I'll put you right back a, in the middle. A, a much wider field of view. If that sounds right with you. Yep. OK, we're going to come up for the, uh, we did the uh, pass along the uh, north wall there for sand to rock interface i got a good uh, shot of that in the stereo camera we're gonna now come up and uh, do some multi-beam bridge bridge nav 10 meters 130 oh it looks like uh, they seem to have solved the heating problem and we should have things cooling down in about 15 minutes so that's good news oh good um, somebody has a question about LIDAR. I think we talked about this like maybe the first day in the van, but uh, can you talk about that again, Larry? Yeah, LIDAR is uh, very equivalent in terms of the concept uh, of, to sonar, where it sends out a beam, in, in sonar's case, uh, an acoustic beam, and you in want LIDAR's case... in the middle, or you put Atlanta in the middle? A I'm light putting beam. Atlanta in the middle, so... Um, right. And it uh, measures the time it takes to, to go north, there and then? back, so we have an idea uh, of what the range is. I'll just keep uh, coming up. Um, the difference is that okay. LIDAR we, we uses need, electromagnetic side, light waves. Because I think we're going to be kind of up above it. I'm going to let right these guys so let's put talk. So let's put you right here. Okay. Like right here, maybe 10 meters? And do that till you run out of tether. Actually, well, actually, if we could start here and come up, and well, then I'm up there do that, now, and so. then okay. Well, uh, uh, yeah. All right, that's fine. Well, you can. I can do a run to the south and no, that's okay. Get me where you want me, and then we can turn around. We'll figure this out. Okay, we're just letting what we call the front row, the the navigator and the pilot, um, sort out where they're going. I didn't want to be talking over them. But so LiDAR uses light beams instead of uh, sonar beams, and light beams are much, much, much higher frequency um, than the sonar beam. And that gives them much higher resolution. So LiDAR should give us much more detail. The trade-off is that the LiDAR doesn't travel as far because light is attenuated very quickly. So. There are things called LiDAR scanners, and, and, and they can give you almost optical, almost um, photographic resolution. But the imagery we have here is even higher resolution than the LiDAR. So LiDAR can be used underwater? Yes. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Special, the particular, hey, Larry. Yeah, Dan? While you're uh, on the subject, and if you have Google there, Google mm -hmm. 3D at depth LiDAR. Right. OK, that's a, a company that makes a 3D scanner, right? Uh, yeah, it's starting to become uh, yeah. kind of accepted in the commercial world. It's oh, a pretty that's cool great. website. They have some cool images. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to uh, convince uh, Nautilus to uh, Rennie to uh, rent one for a season. And yeah, so put that, it on Hercules and see how it works. And yeah, the, I think that would be a great idea. So, so the 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 difference is that the lidar will give us a, a little further range than the camera. The camera will give us the ultimate resolution, but the most limited range. Lidar a little further, a little less resolution, and then um, sonar then give us a much farther range, but much less resolution. And so it's a, all a trade-off yeah. of the physics of stretched out pretty hard there, Chris. All right, call I'm range gonna, versus I'm gonna resolution. I'm going to reset the survey and let. Get you going then. One second. Uh, what altitude do you want? I'm 23 meters right now. Uh, 23 meters out in the flat. Let me take a look how that looks. Uh, you could come down a bit. Oh, yeah. Down. Uh, no, maybe just keep it at this depth. 
Roger. Engaging auto depth. Double tap bug. Okay. I'm holding station. Uh, and I'm All right. Let me put a barely break. able to maintain that inverse heading there because. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'm a good stream. Uh, uh, you might be it? maybe you're better off going along this feature at this, going this way for now. Yeah. Oh do. yeah, you're already kind of lined up. Let's just do that. Well, the tether's falling here. Uh, can you come down? Uh, I can. Five meters, Ray. I can also move you. Uh, no, we'll just get uh, we'll get on par here with the delta. Uh, that should give me what I need. Or right, you can see the tether stretched out really hard there in Atlanta camera, so it's. Hercules has to fight to hold its heading because it's pulling that tether around. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm able to hold that heading there. We can do a, an XY move along the uh, north face if you want. Yeah, we're already kind of lined up for that, so let's just do it. Uh, yeah. Accidentally on purpose. Yeah, one second. We're not quite... Yeah, I'm going to dial some numbers in here so we move nice and slow. Ooh, not that number. That'll be crazy. 0.15. I have, uh, I worked with uh, one of the commercial surveyors that has uh, been pa uh, pioneering the 3D at depth instrumentation. I worked with them since they First had it cobbled together. All right, let's start uh, stepping forward. Ready? Yeah. Okay, pushing the button. Here we go, 100 meters. We won't really go 100 meters. That just happened to be what was plugged in there. That's fine. The detail they're getting with the LiDAR is uh, sufficient enough to do um, a construction work with, so they, you know, can LiDAR two separate structures and build a giant ship length jumper to uh, deploy and hook up like a manifold in a, in a wellhead. There's some pretty cool uh, ones they've done on the on the old jackets in the, in the Gulf there. Hey guys, I'm back. What's up? Oh, I'm just back. And just an update. I'm not sure if folks saw it on their phone, but looks like the crew did discover the issue for the uh, AC. Temperature should be coming down. Hey, Jonathan. Yes, sir. The internet wants you to press OK. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just full screened it with... Oh. All right, so we're making Chris happy here, is that yeah. what? All right. I yeah, want to hear little squeals of joy, Wes. We're, we're halfway through a uh, orbit run on the north face there. All right. We have, yeah, plenty of data on this, but I don't know. Why this, not this have? One, this one will make sure that, like, we actually got it on purpose. Yeah, I like that. What's the uh, grand plan? Last I saw, the Board of Lies says on deck at 1400. I think my watch is wrong. Uh, 1600, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, no. Um, so, uh, Manel has pulled up the, uh, the Norbit mapping for us in uh, Channel 3, and we have a question asking, what is the red imaging we can see in the bottom left corner in the quad view? So. Yeah, so that's the raw water column. So uh, let me, this will make more sense. Uh, 
I can turn it on in this view. So that red image you see in the corner is corresponds to this fan. This is the area that the sonar is insonifying, basically the area that it's lighting up. Uh, yeah, and these are the how intense the return is at any given spot along there. So you can see the bottom clearly, right? And then you can see other stuff sort of in the in the water column as we go. But is that the uh, submarine snow that is giving those reflections? No, it's actually so. You'll notice that they start right at the same radius that we see the first return. All right. Right there. Uh, so these are actually they're called side lobes. The uh, the this beam like in this direction is picking up a little bit of an echo from this bright return right here. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see these rings wherever we get a really bright return. So you see how we have a ring here where we have a bright return. Right. We have a ring here where we have a bright return. That's what's going on there. Huh. An echo. So we're not really getting, I don't know, and maybe that's okay for you, Jonathan. Uh, we're not really getting the super face here, but I think you've had that pretty well surveyed and I think we'll still have enough to line up. Okay. So I don't know that I would worry about that's good. Getting down there and grabbing that. I'll take it. Um, yeah, the, any of the real overhang stuff we're not going to get from this altitude. But if we start going lower, it's going to start taking an awful lot more time. How are we doing on tether? Uh, how are we doing there, Ray? Am I pulling you yet? That That's totally up to you, Chris. We are, uh, yeah, we're getting... And just, just to let you know, we, we've uh, kind of been extended the deck time at 4 p.m. Yeah. Thank you. So, Thank you uh, for that. So I think yeah, we're almost to the end of the feature, so if we can push this just a little bit, that'd almost be great. Almost to the end of the tether. Uh, you can um, spin around there. That'll help so it's not uh, fighting. Yeah, why don't we come down? We could probably get... Unfortunately, this is not our good side for looking out to the side. Oh wait, no, yeah, it is. Hang on. No, but if we it run, a, if we run totally around, our good side. if we run around the whole thing, oh yeah, it is. So I'm saying maybe we'll come down, back up, and then do that one, and then we'll get that corner. Yeah, so maybe, maybe we'll do a come down, we'll turn do an Atalanta and, move. Yeah. Right. Put you here. But if I come down now, and turn around, you'll get your good side along the cliff. No, we're on the good side. Back oh, up. Oh, we are. Back up. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So in that case, we could run around the whole thing and then do a low pass around the whole thing. Yeah. I can do all that without moving the ship. Yeah. All right. So let's come down. That's good there. We got a really good clean line. All right. There. So you just want to turn now and do the south wall and then do the... Yeah. Let me put a grid in here so I can... Uh, I can tell you how much I want you to come down. Oh, uh, you want to do the north wall again? No, yeah, let's do this north wall again. Just back up. We're already lined up for it, so... Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. See if Hercules will fly backwards, but... Okay, Ray, we're going to come down. So if you could come down with me and hold that 10-meter delta, that would help. The computer might be able to fly backwards. I can't, or the darn. Okay, so there's a question about uh, what the red imaging you can see in the bottom left corner of the quad view, and that's the, from the multi-beam sonar. And uh, the very bright, the intense return you're seeing is the... All right, there we go. Bottom so that grid there is five meter cells. Right so there. it looks like if we come down another... Chris spoke ten. about that a few minutes ago. Oh, he did, he did. Yeah. okay. Oh, I'm sorry. 20, 20 something up now. Yeah, let me let me steer us over to the left. And it, uh, <laughs> he brought up this uh, cool fan. It's wild, you can do that. Right. Yeah, it, I don't know. We can't tilt up much higher than that. So that's 15 meters there. I think that's good. This is this is this should be good. Let's okay. try it. You ready? Uh, you might have to do a little sideways move to watch your your back end on that. You want, you want to stay to... off it a little bit, but... Okay, let me change my head a little. That'll... Yeah, that'll help. <laughs> What's that, right? It's in the bubble can, the fish attacking it. <laughs> uh, come on, Adam. come on, guys. Yeah, I don't think we'll quite get up to negative 20 degrees. We'll see. 
But this is a good altitude. It looks, if you see the fan, it looks like we'll grab that, that whole thing there. Sorry, it's all right. Uh, 225, let's try that. Some lag in the nav G there now with that. Yeah, I know. It doesn't like it's. I think it re renders the whole screen every update. Yeah. Instead of just the top layer. Yeah. Yeah, you can stay tail to tail. You see, you see a. Uh, in uh, your aft cam there, you can see Hercules. If you want to maintain at this heading, you could step back and sideways. If oh, yeah. you're having trouble turning, that'd I be totally fine. I can do that. Uh, or if you can maintain this heading, that's good too. This heading. Okay. Here we go. 100 meters. Backwards. All right. Yeah, we really should try mounting the Norbit at 10, 15 degrees to the side. Uh, we keep On, talking about it. I know, that. but <laughs> it, it's been working so well in the orientation that I hesitate to mess with anything. I, I was too, yeah. You know? I, I think you have more options with it as it is right now. Once you, once you start tilting it, it'll be better in certain situations, but I, I think... Exactly. Maybe if we knew we were doing a 100-meter you know, cliff dive or something like that. Something happened with the nav there. We're wonky. Yeah. The nav has gone wonky. That is. It has. Oh. I just sit on top. It has. I don't know what happened. <laughs> it took on stupid. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not that wonky. It's catching up. It's just slow. I noticed it being really slow there while I was. Yeah. Because usually I can use that to adjust my heading when I'm being lazy and I don't want to do math with my compass. Well, no, I'm saying we're not getting great alignment on the cliff for some reason. Oh. oh. Yeah. That's okay. We can fix it. It just may take a little more effort. Do you charge by the boxel? Uh, it's okay. It's, <laughs> it's not as bad as it looked. It's not great there. We'll fix that later. All right. How much more do you think you got of this? We got 10, we, 20, 30 so meters do we or so. Do we super care about this face back here, this edge? No. OK. Then not very much. Okay, to, sorry. I, yeah. I didn't mean to over. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> hard, though. All right, later. <laughs> well. That is the least interesting of all the faces. <laughs> it, it's not as sharp in any sense. Uh, so I would propose when, when you're finished, just kind of comes running straight down the middle of the top, right down that next spine, towards the feature to the southeast. If you could zoom out a second, let Jonathan see on the high pack. Oh, sorry, yeah, I don't have the high pack pulled up at the moment. Uh, high pack served. There we go. Is this? It's hard, also it's hard for Chris to uh, high pack and. Norbit because he's yeah, mon he's monitoring, monitoring his model. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the idea is ju I just, my suspect. So you want to go down this feature, right? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, after the next survey line, we'll be set up to do that. Nice. Okay, you can zoom back in. No, we're not coming off bottom. I'll, uh, I'll talk to him. Uh, we can get to that high point. I yep. bet you that's cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping. Check, check, I radio check, and I'll yeah, we'll we'll give you a heads up, up when we come off bottom. Get him we don't have a lot because we're 390 at the moment. Uh, but I will time it. We will time it. So we're uh, on deck at 4. So 10 to 4, be ready to give her the Yankee. Uh, Chris, is it okay to ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, so somebody says that they have a question. How does Chris's model resolve the vehicle's position data, or how accurate is the fix on it? Just because I know that the ship's USBL can sometimes vary in its accuracy, is yeah. there a specific set of sensors? Yeah, that's a that's a whole thing. So yeah, we do use the ship's USBL, which is the uh, ultra short baseline um, acoustic locator. So it determines where Hercules is relative to the ship. Couple 
meters there. Uh, you can step. You can also step like this. Okay. Yeah. Well, there. We're. Yeah. So the USBL tells us where we are relative to uh, the ship, and the ship knows relative where it is relative to the Earth. But yeah, as the as that person said, the. Um, and look down a little. The uh, USBL is not super precise. It gives our position to within a couple meters, maybe, or meters. In shallow depths, it's pretty good. In deep depths, it's a couple meters. Uh, so we actually have to fuse it with the uh, DBL, the Doppler velocity log, which is basically just a really precise odometer. So if you imagine like the odometer in your car, it tells you how fast you went or how far you went since you reset it. Except this one does it in two dimensions. It does it in four, it does it north and south and keeps track east and west once you fuse it with the whole system. So we take those and we those two position sensors and we put fuse them together through something called a Kalman filter. Uh, and that gives us a much more precise position. But even still, our position is not quite as precise as the data that we get out of the Norbit sonar. So uh, that's kind of an open research area for us uh, where we can use the Norbit sonar maps to actually feed back into the navigation solution. Uh, and that's a process called uh, simultaneous localization and mapping. Slam uh, it. Or slam. slam. Yeah. And that's sort of the dream, right? Because if you have that and you have that working well, you don't even necessarily need USBL. So you, with the DBL, you have two dimensions, but you also have an independent measure of Altitude depth. or depth. Yeah. yeah. Depth is about the only thing that we can know fairly certainly. Unfortunately, there's these things called tides, yeah. which start to confuse things a little bit when you're doing really long surveys, because you're measuring relative to the sea surface, and the sea surface changes over time. Uh, and they can actually be pretty hard to measure and predict in the middle of the ocean, an open ocean, when you're far from a tide station or an area that's studied well. So yeah, there's uh, we solved many of the problems. We have not yet solved all of them. <laughs> all uh, right, that if looks you wanted, pretty good. You could Let move the ship uh, zero four five or something, and to do the last run, and then we're, that'll line us up to yeah, follow yeah, yeah, that yeah. feature, anyways. Man, does this thing not like that map? All right. 10 meters, 045. Bridge, bridge, nav, 10 meters, 045. Okay, you can go ahead and turn, Dan, and start, line us up along this way. We'll do a... Right. Yeah, you're, you're we'll do done, a... Done with that pass, are you? Yeah, we're done with it. We, do we got what we're going to get. Do the slow turn? Yeah, No, you don't even need to do the slow turn. There's nothing to get. Right. I'm just going to cut this turn out, probably. So a very, inter a very interesting question just came in about how uh, the question is Come about up, the uh, colors that the imaging meters? presents. Up uh, five. We call it the color right map. Oh, uh, that's and me. You're good. Whether there are standards or we just kind of pick them up. There are lots of approaches to that. Uh, there are kind of standard color maps that are used, but not necessarily depths that are assigned to those colors. So uh, lots of the software will compress that color map to the range of depths so you can see the most contrast. Um, it really depends on what your purpose is. I think here we're we're trying to see over a relatively narrow depth range. Up five. Um, yeah, this seems good. In this case, we're, you know, uh, our, our deeps are this way, maybe a couple 420 meters, meters right. and our shallows are 380, so we're, we're looking only 40, 50 meters of depth range. Now, I'll but have to come a Chris little is south using the entire color map there. from the purples to the reds Once so we, we can see those ship. differences quite subtly. That's right. Uh, yeah, so Jonathan, I think to save time, I might just skip this backside. Uh, I don't know if you want that. I, I'm pointing in the Norbit map. Nah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy if you're happy. I go okay. by your instinct. Yeah. In fact, I'm just generally happy right now, so All I'm right, basically just <laughs> along for the ride. But you're not singing. Oh, well, you know, I've been... Beyond like, singing happy. Yeah, no, <laughs> I got Beyonce in my head right now, guys. <laughs> I mean, we could, we'll see. 
we'll see where we end up time-wise, but I, I would be reasonably happy leaving it out. Okay. Uh, I mean, isn't isn't that the direction that we have to go anyway to no, achieve? No, to no, no, uh, no. The direction that we're about to do is the one we have to go anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which yeah. is kind of like why we're, while we're at the end of this, we'll be kind of perfectly set up set, to just keep up, rolling. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that's the best approach right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to try to get this one in one pass. Okay. Roger. Full beans. So, yeah, uh, rotate yourself a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we, we basically uh, have an hour. You can, you, can, can you can come over here. Okay. Either that or move the ship a little more. The east. ship is. Yeah, all right. Or both. Yeah, let's do both. There, um, she's coming around now. There, I got enough there. Okay. Got the head lined up here. Once you start moving, I'm going to put a ship move in along the strike of this. Roger. This guy. Oops, sorry. Okay, I think I'm lined up there. It's, uh, one, what am I? One, five, zero. Uh, it looks like we'll grab it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, keep it at that depth. Uh, altitude? All yeah, right. or at this, yeah, depth, rather. Well, this altitude, depth, whatever. You're probably going to get Atlanta as we go by, too. <laughs> All right, well. Rise there, looking at corals with Atlanta. All right, let's go. Well, <laughs> we should be using the multi-beam so, Dan. We, we okay, should be using the multi-beam on Atlantis. Then. 100 meters. All right. I'll put in a 15-meter move once you get a beam of it, Atlanta. Roger. Uh, can you check the gauges while we're doing this? And I'm going to stow the... Uh, there's this big crack here. Do you guys see this? Before I break it. Oh yeah, I know. We can see it in uh, in the map too. Yep. I thought it was a shadow, but it's a crack. No, no. no you can see it in, in the Atalanta. Yeah, image. neat. I really enjoy seeing the kind of features that we can resolve from the high altitude pass when we actually get down and get visual on them. See what they actually look like. It's rare that you get the opportunity to ground truth the multi. I know it. Uh, can you hit uh, craft on there for me real quick? Sorry. Thank you. I'm going to have a lot of processing to do tonight. Oh, actually, we're coming up early. That's good. That'll give me time. Chris, you in the real-time display? Are you putting an arbitrary cutoff for the outer beams, or are you? Oh no, I'm everything? not. It's uh, it's selecting. It's it's picking, just getting whatever it, the best it can do. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, I set 100 meters, so it, just to keep the ping rate up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if so you set you, it so out too far, sometimes it'll. All right. So you are limiting the swath then. then. Uh, yeah, somewhat. I mean, not effectively. Um. You want to click your auto head in and uh, look, look away, look away, uh, look can to the west. Set, can you step to port just a little bit? Right Slow there. step to port. So I'm, I'm going to stop and do that. Okay. Yeah, this allows us to keep an eye on it in the tail cam there. Use your other camera. Um, I saved it as just, um, You're good there. Say what? That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you can just you can do it while we're doing the forward. Uh, it doesn't quite work like that. Does it not? No, it stacks the moves. So if you oh, put yeah. a port and then da da da, it goes to some wonky angle. All right. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Keep Continuing. going. Continuing. One five zero. Oh, you simplified it. Yeah. Oh, did I simplify it? Yeah, you did. Oh, I'm simplifying it. I think it's good for when it's not simplified. Uh, you could probably do another move east if you wanted to with Atlanta. Or, no, never mind. I'll come. We want to come on this feature, right? Yeah. 
Okay, yeah, no, you're fine there. The what you had, the 150 you had planned. Bridge, bridge, nav, 15150. Used to. It used to freak me out having Atalanta this low, and then we did the carrier dives. <laughs> <laughs> we were below the five meter mark with Atalanta repeatedly, and in calm weather, we we came low enough to waft the bottom several times, and we managed to get through three carriers without actually touching anything with Atalanta, which was amazing. Uh, but yeah, we came within meters with it at 5,000 meters so it was just uh, yeah what's that you got your mic kind of far away right what's that yeah I can turn you up uh, okay oh wait wrong button I hate it when I do that. Wrong button again. Okay. Yeah, you have to be you have to be blessed with some nice weather, otherwise it's really scary. Because uh, Atlanta uh, porpoises, so on the heave it'll it's heavier in the front. It'll nose down, and it looks like you're torpedo dive bomber. Uh, you might have enough tether now uh, to swing around if you want. I'm going to have him put in just another move. Yeah, sure. Breach, breach, nab, another one five meters. another good example Jonathan we can see uh, even if I look down with oh maybe I can we can see the details on the seabed at 10 meters up 13 meters up with cinema cam where Zeus sees a porch yeah I like that yeah me too we're 10 meters uh, we're 13 meters up right remarkable now. Down lights, for this down lights and forward, or, or just downs? Uh, no, I turn the downs off because if it'll, you can't see as far because it oh, yeah, lights yeah. up all the flock in the water. So if we had dimmable lights, we could, ours are more on off. Uh, we have a question. Is this photogrammetry map a combination of all the dives or do you make new ones for each dive? New for each dive. It only works for certain elements where we, you know, really have uh, carefully considered all of the different um, moves of the ROV and the terrain in and around the area. So we're breaking these up into smaller models to be uploaded. Although the penultimate, you know, um, sorry, not the penultimate, the ultimate goal is to present a single unified model of an entire dive which would uh, be uh, quite extraordinary across like a 24 to 36 hour uh, kind of quote unquote typical ROV dive. Entirely, entirely possible. Um, yeah, just kind of go till you run out of tether. Yeah, I think we should, we can go ahead and skip this back wall. Uh, yeah. I think we got enough pings on the top and stuff from that first pass. 
and I can try to fill in with some of the stuff that we did crossing Roger. later, so. You have Because we're running low on time on this dive anyway, right, so. Are you happy out to the south there, or you want to keep pushing it? Uh, yeah, no, that's good for the south. Uh, I'm going to switch my survey back to... Okay. Yeah, so we, we have about 45 minutes left, so I think... I'm going to drop if, down to the seabed. If then, you're ready, if you're drop down, on Chris. down, follow follow this uh, spine of a ridge and Got get it. to the shallower point, and we'll see, see how things look there. That's 10 meters up there. Looks like something out of Planet of the Apes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from, sorry. <laughs> came from the mind of Dan. <laughs> where else? Okay, great. Uh, we're back to background survey mode, so. Yeah. Uh, we can start moving the ship along the yep. feature there if you want. Uh, maybe a one three five move to put Adelana behind us. All right. I'm just gonna come back towards Adelanta a little bit. Well, That's an interesting hunk of rock. Three zero meters, one one five. One three five, Chris. Yeah, that'll get you there. Oh yeah. As we start moving. Right and I see we're at a depth of three hundred and ninety one meters. Is that correct? Three nine one, correct. Three nine one. Yeah, one three five kind of just keeps you parallel to the you know the straight the. I was gonna do the. Foam, foam. Oh, you want to follow that one? <coughs> yeah, we're going this way. Right. I, I I think that's it. That's <laughs> that's the like that's the little spine. But it's, it's gonna it's gonna get more dramatic. It oh looks yeah. Like as yeah. we go yeah, south. No, that's, that, that's the whole idea. But I think yep. that's that's the arrow pointing you in the direction. Larry, that's the same uh, coral reef rock that fifteen thousand year old rock that we were seeing earlier is buried under the sand. Right. Right. And it's got the same pitting that was mm -hmm. evident before because this was exposed or it was on the shoreline mm -hmm. uh, 15,000 years ago before the sea levels rose as the gl glaciers melted. Yep, and we'll start seeing it get a little, a little higher, a little more prominent, and then actually rise into a, a larger positive feature. Bra? No. Oh, maybe it's wide enough there to get Hercules down into. Oh, yeah. Fly in the canyon. I like cannons. I like canyons. Almost as good as cliffs. To give, to give you and the, and the listeners an idea of the scale of the increase in the water level, the oldest, uh, one of the oldest uh, Paleolithic uh, spear points, Clovis, that's the word I'm looking for. One of the oldest Clovis spear points to be found in the United States came out of the bottom of Chesapeake Bay. An oyster fisherman found it in the 1950s when he was raking the bottom for oysters. And that's because Chesapeake Bay, between, of course, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, was at the time of the height of the Ice Age a, a, a river valley with people living down next to the river uh, growing crops, living in, in uh, little villages, and when the glaciers melted, that water, you know, rose so rapidly it flooded and turned into what is now the Chesapeake Bay. And that uh, oyster fisherman was smart enough to turn that Clovis Point into the Smithsonian Institute, where I had the privilege of holding it. Because, uh, of course, you know me, Larry, I climbed all over every nook and cranny. <laughs> I was all over the back rooms of the Smithsonian exploring all their collections, meeting all the scientists, and I met the the chief paleontologist for the Smithsonian, who was a brilliant, brilliant, interesting scientist, and he showed me this Clovis point. He said, but for that oyster fisherman, we would not have this. Hmm. And that was evidence of the scale of the increase in the water level when those glaciers melted. 
Yeah, well, the shoreline went actually well well beyond where Chesapeake Bay is. Uh, exactly. Out to what we call the shelf break now, because at, at, at one point, about 18,000 years ago, sea level was about 120 meters uh, lower uh, than it is now. The Just next move, we can do point three. Yeah. Just extraordinary. And, we, and we find that 120 okay. meter contour right. different along the coast, uh, but no, in some places as far as 200 miles offshore. 120 meter yeah. increase Roughly. in the sea level, Larry, from when the glaciers began to mill. Mm -hmm. And and Bob uh, was telling me last night, Bob Ballard was telling me last night on the ship while we were visiting over dinner that the, the New England area is still rebounding. The weight of the glaciers was so great that here, 15, 18,000 years later, New England is still, the rock is still rebounding. That's, a, that's absolutely correct, yeah. So the, our, our consideration of sea, sea level always has to be relative, even though globally sea level is rising in places where there was very, very thick ice, like northern New England, uh, places right. like Greenland. Um, that land was depressed so much um, that when the ice melted, there's a, there's a rebound three zero, one two zero. from this yeah, it's hard to from that it. weight, and that rebound is happening right? more right? rapidly than the sea level rise. So in those places, there's still a relative uh, fall in sea level, but it'll it'll stop pretty soon. Right, it'll right. catch up. I guarantee Perfect. it. But it's hard to imagine those glaciers at New York City, points further north, was two to three miles thick. Imagine standing in Manhattan and looking up two miles at two miles of ice. Uh, Dan, if, if you're in a position to get a quick zoom of that, that was just such a pretty, pretty beautiful. little thing. Yeah. yeah, I can zoom on it. Uh, can you hit the uh, porch on the bubble cam for me? And we'll put Zach under pressure here. I use the uh, porch as my... I was landing. trying to look before we zoomed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad angle to identify it, I would think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which one we, did you want to see? We believe in you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I know. You can zoom in there. Copy that. Yeah. Oh, we got a little shrimp on there, too. Yeah. It's a nice shot. It's a nice shot a in the uh, stereo cam. The sea urchin. To hit deploy and see what happens. Oh, I got a good, <laughs> got a good image of that. Are the yeah. sea urchins predatory to the coral? Well, they they're, they're eating the coral along with the brittle star and the starfish, which are also eating the coral. I get the feeling uh -huh. everybody eats everybody down there. <laughs> <laughs> this guy right here is saying, "Come on, ROV, I'll take you on." Yeah, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're good. Yeah. You're good. My pleasure. Zoom on out. Okay, I'm now go away. The red coral, I think, is the um, it, secundum yes. species. But the gold one, I'll, I'll keep looking. Okay, what did you think the red one was? I think it's the um, Pleurocorallium uh, that's secundum. That's a nice view of Atalanta. I think of Hercules, one, yeah. of that, one of that genus, and at since least. since we're moving, the tether is uh, uh, <laughs> blowing off to our right. So it's not in your face. So and, it show, and it shows how Herc, uh, Herc does not always move forward. It's it, it's uh, no, or it's not good, move in the direction it's pointed. I should say. That's it, a good uh, that's a good view of Hercules. Sir. Yeah, I think the gold one was some type of a uh, Acanthogorgia. Oh, Stylaster. So we have a student asking about internships, and uh, no, the Nautilus does not offer high school internships, but uh, there is the Naval STEM interns uh, through the Office of Naval Research, and the website is navalsteminterns.us backslash S-E-A-P, SEAP. So again, that's navalsteminterns.us backslash S E A P. Can you back up just a bit, Dan? Roger. I think you're following a 
false ridge. I was. I just jumped over there to see the oh, okay. corals. All right. Fair. There's the real one. Uh, yeah. There's the real ridge, yeah. Ah. Good thing we have this here Norbit map. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. That's trouble. That's true. <laughs> That's true. What fantastic utility. <laughs> Look at look, look at that Atlanta view. That's that's quite spectacular. Yeah, I just awesome. highlighted that. <laughs> wow, wow, wow! Look yeah. at yeah, me. but that's cool. You can see the little ridge that Dan was following. Oh wow! Right there. Look at that pretty thing, coral. Yeah, and even more, <laughs> even more further up. As we're rising. Uh. Oh, good. That student says that they are filling out the Naval STEM intern thing. Uh, Kristen, Dr. Kristen Mitchell is here with the Office of Naval Research, and she works with them. And so she will be very happy that you are doing that. I do not know if she is listening in the lounge. <laughs> but I think it's due, like, really soon. Zero, one, one, zero. Look at these guys here. Yeah. So Christian was saying that just uh, through the time of this cruise, uh, the number of applications has increased. Quite a oh, bit, wow. Uh, That's amazing. Really, really neat to hear. Yeah. she. Um, I've been tagging them in all of Slow Mo's posts online. Yeah, I think these gold corals again are the Kula Mana Mana ones, the, the unique ones that are only here in Hawaii. Yeah, what's the uh, common... Uh, so I haven't found a common name, and it, the scientific name is even Hawaiian, which is pretty unique. Because um, Kula Mana Mana is the genus, and the species is the Hamea'e. Okay, so look what at, is... Look at that large one hanging what off is on that, the side. Uh, meaning there's a translation for it, I've heard. Yeah, there before. is. Uh, I looked it up earlier. i got to look it up again. <laughs> But yeah, these large branching ones are. <laughs> the student wrote in, yes, it's due uh, in like three hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better get to it. We believe in you. You can do this. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah, you, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you won't get the internship unless you apply. No, That's for sure. Uh, Hercules in the lake there. Uh, somebody wrote in that it's called the Hawaiian gold coral. That's it, Hawaiian gold coral. Yeah. I can say that I cannot pronounce the Hawaiian name yeah. <laughs> without embarrassing the heck out of myself. Everybody in this van hopes that you get this internship. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. That's not a bad spot. Is this where we were earlier? No, no, we haven't no? been here before at all. Oh, wow. This is like the, the same diversity we had earlier. That's cool. Yeah, as you can see, the, uh, awesome. you're not, you're not the current's blowing. Uh, huh? You can see what's happening with our tether there, which way the current's yeah. blowing. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got some... Uh, uh, it's blowing up against the... Uh, like cliff today there. species it's, up there? It's blowing up that cliff as, you know, we, know we've, all seen, wow. we've all seen birds uh, hanging on, you know, right on the edge of cliffs like that to catch the updraft, and clearly the uh, these corals are taking advantage of that updraft up that cliff to catch to catch food and we can see the effect on the tether from uh, maybe come a little more south case. on the next move Chris keep uh, yeah um, yeah I'm just trying to keep following you just off right. the back of the ridge can you look to your right a little for me All right just show some of the terrain to the right with Atlanta there <laughs> put Herc on the left oh, that's right that's that's beautiful that's really something there yeah I love the orange in there, too. Yeah. Uh, and people are writing in that they hope you get the internship, too. <laughs> Aww. That'll let us uh, monitor the tether as well. So. Wow.
I'm gonna, I'm gonna message Kristen right now and tell her that there's a kid on my that's applying. <laughs> I am recording now just on that single fish eye because I can. <laughs> Meanwhile, look at this beautiful spin that Dan is doing. Oh, never mind, he's just kind of noodling <laughs> off into nowhere. I take back that compliment. Just. <laughs> We're just heading off into the boonies now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <two orange. laughs> Straight east. Okay, let's bring it back in. Back Never let them know your next move. <laughs> Negative. That's correct. Uh, somebody's writing in that these bamboos are Akanella bamboos. Okay, come up to your left I can just sing Christmas music. Right it's after Halloween. <laughs> See the upcoming. What? Yeah, that's <laughs> where we wanted to be. Are you singing Christmas songs? No, for sure not. That sounded like a Christmas song. No. <laughs> that sounded like I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. <laughs> I never do such a thing. There you go. Keep on that nice slow spin. In the industry, this is what you call buttering a pancake right here. I just made that up. And then, <laughs> and then take a look at the Atalanta view again. Yeah, quite, I quite keep cool. tagging that yeah, or highlighting it. I was going to say that I have never heard that terminology in this industry. Yeah, I was going to say is that something that Jonathan made up. Yeah, but now you do. <laughs> <laughs> and one day in 20 years on set, you're going to be like, we need to butter this pancake. <laughs> 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 and I'll know where you got it from. <laughs> It was <gasps> Jonathan. Oh, I thought that was a sea slug. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, moving on. That, so somebody wrote in, that was a Christmas song. Yeah, dang it. Um, are Atalanta and Hercules tethered together? Yes. Larry, I have to say, I really love how you say Atalanta. <laughs> because <laughs> it's such a tough word for me. At you know? Atalanta. <laughs> Atalanta. What is the history of that name? It's a Greek. It's a. Uh, it's Greek mythology. I think mm. it's, it was a goddess who traveled with. Uh, uh, huntress. Who? The huntress. The huntress. Yeah. Diana. Um, we have a question: Is there a place to watch the old live streams, or are the highlights the only rewatchable things? Uh, yes. Uh, I think the live streams, like, they can go back a certain number of Range hours or something, now. but uh, I recommend the highlights on YouTube. Yeah, so we have our highlights on YouTube, which is nautiluslive.org, or sorry, youtube.com slash evnautilus, at evnautilus. And uh, in addition, if you search for full dive recordings, Nautilus Live on YouTube, you can uh, discover and review all of our publicly funded expeditions. Um, going back about five years, I believe we have archived. Up up the little dam. Three years go. we have archived. Um, and those are available um, uh, free of charge, just on YouTube. Uh, a viewer is asking for a zoom on the pink and white coral because we haven't ID'd it yet. I think I would love to just continue on unless there's a science. Oh, look at that. They're all rowed up. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Can we do a full oh, really, 3D really spin beautiful. of this? This is incredible. This is worth a spin. Yeah, so this is, this is <laughs> if you look, at, look the, at that. If you look at the topography, you'll probably see the explanation of why they're all here, yeah. too. It's, a, it's a, just facing this deep channel, and I suspect the current comes whipping down that deep channel. Absolutely. And, and there, there it is being funneled incredible. right to that wall. 
Wow, and look, it's all the way around. It's like a tabletop. Yeah, this is uh, this is just gorgeous and ideal That's for the three-dimensional printing. Giant fish.